Good morning my wonderful friends. Welcome back to my channel. It's Belinda here. After a lot of um, feedback on my monthly masterboard challenge, and when I say a lot, it's a lot in my world, you know, maybe four people came back to me and says what about using them or I'd like to see a video on using a masterboard. So today that's exactly what we're going to do. So I think what I might plan to do is the first Friday of the month I'll do the challenge of making the masterboard and then the Friday after that I will do a using that masterboard. How does that sound? Does that sound like something we can all um, enjoy? So I will within that look at different ways to use your masterboard. And today is something I've come up with. I haven't actually done it before and I was just like, what am I going to do with these guys with this masterboard that we made in our first challenge? And I have received a new kit from the lovely Michelle at the Junk Journal Studio. It's Labels of Gone, Days Gone By, Volume 2. And I got it, I downloaded it and printed it off yesterday and ever since I've been like, what am I going to do with it? I want to do a specific project. It's all labels. And so like it's it's not like it's a journal kit. You know, it's it's bits and pieces to use on other things. So we are going to use this today. And I'm going to show you a quick wee flick through of this. There are 20 pages. So it's not a small kit. Beautiful old labels. Just absolutely scrummy really yummy um each what do i want to say each set of labels so there's normal or full size and then the second sheet is the same labels in at least two different sizes so same same labels as on this page but just in the different sizes so super easy you've got all your bases covered of whatever size you might like and then if you want tiny 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 you could print this off at half size again so you've got so many options so beautiful labels and i was super excited to see this one it's a label for christchurch which is the city closest to me so i don't know where you found that michelle um but I really appreciate that there's a New Zealand label in there and super fun. And last night I was like, there was a there was a Christchurch label and I went through the whole thing and I couldn't find it. I was like, I know I saw it. And then I was preparing for this video and it just jumped out at me again. It's funny, you can look for something and it hides. And then when you're not looking, it's just like, here I am. So yeah, I was, I was thrilled to see a little nod to New Zealand in there. So again, the second page is always just those labels in different sizes, in two diff at least two different. I think there's the odd one that's plugged the gap where it's in maybe three different sizes. This is a fun one here, this little graphic. I mean, just beautiful. That will suit so many projects. Really, really lovely. I do like labels. If you're familiar with my channel, you will know this about me. I love, love, love labels. I don't think you can ever have too many labels. Love this pen holder one. Some awesome graphics, like they're just mini works of art. And we've got some round ones and then some really interesting shapes, which will be fun. Perhaps not as fun to cut out, but fun to use. <laughs> but not, not. Uh, yeah not too hard to cut out just in fact in my world I would say actually more interesting to cut out because it's not just straight I do like something that's got a little little bit of a challenge or a little bit of a shape because sometimes I find cutting straight gets boring coffee one cent per pound wow what do we pay now I think coffee here in New Zealand around for a standard coffee is about six dollars um, give or take depending on the facility and what style of coffee you want but yeah six six bucks for a cup of coffee mmm it's getting it getting pricey out there isn't it 
really pricey some beautiful handwriting appearing here and there and i love these uh, number ones really beautiful i just couldn't wait to use this kit i just wanted to jump in as you can see i haven't cut anything out so there will be a bit of cutting involved today this book belongs to super cute this really ornate image here with a couple of lions Just so much fun. Beautiful fonts and things they used to use on these old old graphics, old labels, signs. Another book plate here, really pretty. This one's interesting. It's kind of feels more modern and yet vintagey at the same time. Yeah, interesting. And I think it's purely the use of colour um, on the original. It's Piers Soap. So again, in the small, like these wee thermometer ones as well. Super cute. So that is the kit. Labels of Days Gone By, Volume 2. So I've already got Volume 1. I bought Volume 1 before I was on the design team. And now I'm on the design team and I got my hands on this lovely kit. So we're going to use this and use our masterboard here now obviously you may not have these although i thoroughly recommend them but if you don't have these then look through your stash we want anything that's relatively small in the ephemera line so it could be mini journal cards it could be labels um, you might want to stamp some images and cut those out anything small and as we go along, hopefully you will get the idea. Now, before I start into those, the other thing is backing your masterboard. I went ahead and did it off camera. All I did was took a sheet of butcher paper, so packing paper, and glued it on and smoothed it out as much as possible. I did get a few lumps of glue under there, so it's a little bit, little bit wrinkly and bumpy. That's one idea, is just a sheet of paper that is the right size and just glue it on you could also collage you could put strips of paper on um, yeah cover it however you want with whatever you want that's writable so the key is that this back part needs to be a writing surface unless you're making pockets but we're not making pockets today and then this side is your decorative side so we're working on this side today and I'm just wondering whether I can actually use my guillotine and do some of the cutting with that because I feel like it might be a bit quicker rather than cutting with the scissors as long as I can get the line up. Okay, I think that's not too bad. because I don't want the cutting to take too long because we want to get into the decorating part, the fun part. So I'm going to start with that, I think. And I didn't quite get it lined up properly on that second cut, but it's a start. So first off, I'm going to go with this lovely square one. This is a totally a different approach to what I've done before. And I thought, well, why not just jump in and do it? It looks it looks like fun. Not the right word. Sounds like fun in my own head. When I was thinking about this, I was like, that sounds like it would be fun. And we're going to create some mini ephemera or small ephemera today is my plan. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue this on. Actually, before I glue it on, I want to ink. I do want to ink, so there'll be a bit of inking as well. You absolutely don't have to, but I definitely want to because these are all vintage style. My background's got that vintage feel because it's book page. So I want to play on that and emphasise that aspect. My cap off will help get the glue out, won't it? So I hope you have had a wonderful week, my friends. 
hope you've uh, kept busy in the best possible way not in that crazy I don't know whether I'm coming or going away but just in a good productive fun way so I'm just going to start in the corner there and leave kind of the same gap around the top and bottom uh, the sides here and from the corner now I believe this is about the same width and I'm looking for ones that are the same width for this first set because it's going to make life easier when we come to chop this up it's not too bad with the scissors I don't think it will take too long right and here you need to decide whether you just want it in this or whether you want to add a little bit extra um, I think I'm going to keep it simple for now and I'm going to try and aim for about the same distance around each one so a little bit of eyeballing I'm not going to measure if you want to be more precise then measure it all out but really it's got time for that like let's Bear in mind you've got to remember a gap around the bottom of this one and then a gap around the top of this one. So you need like a double gap in between, if that makes sense. So I think we've got room for perhaps a deeper one. So I'm looking for one that's the same width again, but a little bit taller than these ones. So I think this one might work. So I can't get the guillotine in there without chopping another label in half. So I'm just going to look around this one. Hopefully. Oh, I didn't, I didn't ink that one. Oops. I've got ahead of myself. Oh well. It's just going to have a different look, isn't it? Were you yelling at me? Were you telling me you forgot to ink it? Because obviously I was too busy talking. I wasn't listening to you guys. Yeah, that's going to fit nicely there. So let's ink this one. And remember to put the lid on my glue in between. Would be good. So weekend coming right up. And hubby and I are super excited to go pick up our new car new to us not brand new just new to us um but i haven't actually mentioned to you guys i found out on monday and i just haven't thought to mention it in a video at all this week which is really weird is the car yard that we bought our car from um so we were there set last saturday and on sunday evening fortunately when the car yard was closed in behind the car yard are some grain silos for the flour factory. Five of them, I believe. Five huge big grain silos. And one of them collapsed on Sunday evening, uh, you know, at sort of late evening, night. I'm not sure exactly what time. And it's possible nobody actually knows precisely what time it happened. Um, one of them collapsed and it fell into the car yard now the majority of the cars are inside in a warehouse but the ones that were outside which were primarily trade-in vehicles um, by the sheer force and weight of this grain spilling out at a great rate of knots out of the silo pushed one car 20 meters and pushed a lot of other cars and pushed them into each other and so a lot of damage was done to the cars in the car yard um, and they couldn't open on Monday because of it had to be investigated and obviously all this grain was everywhere and needs to be cleaned up and the dust in the air from that grain you know all the grain dust and that can be flammable so you know there's all sorts of health and safety things about it so big drama at the car yard I'm just pleased that our car was inside and apart from whatever dust got pushed in under the doors when the grain silo gave way, um, should be good as gold. And we have, I, we have heard from the guy 
not about that issue, just about something else. Um, actually, I'll tell you that too. He forgot to give hubby his driver's license back. Like he had to copy it for the records to do the finances and everything. And then left it in the scanner and forgot to give it back to hubby. So he rang us to say, I've still got your driver's license. So we have heard from the, the guy um, and he didn't mention there was any problem with the car. So not anticipating there's any problem with the car should be all good but yeah man i felt for them because it's not their fault the car yard are not at fault in any of this but it would have cost all the staff a day of pay i assume like insurance or something will have to pay for that but um yeah big drama man and the company who owns the grain silos well their insurance company won't be happy because They've got to pay out for, I think there was like 10 cars damaged in, when it happened. And then plus lost wages for the their own staff as well as the next door neighbour's staff of the car yard. Um, I don't know exactly how insurance works but I imagine it's not going to be that great. Yeah, so that was, I just can't believe I didn't mention it on a video before now like how did I get through a whole week not telling you that like quite interesting piece of information <laughs> I don't know must be other stuff going on in my head I guess right so again lining it up making sure I've got that double gap in between and if I don't get them straight then it gives also gives me a leeway and you if you're doing this too a little bit of leeway to trim it up to make it straight. Right, now I need to try and, I think I need to measure. If I had them all cut out, it would be easy. I just want to try and see what. Finish my sentence. What label will fit with the size? And hopefully I'll find one. Oops. It's wider. Let's narrow that one and go with this one. Just gonna chop it out. So I can see some of these are obviously a lot wider, like that one. So I'm not choosing labels by what I like or what I prefer, I'm just choosing by size. And I'm choosing the larger ones now because I don't want to be here for like three hours doing this for you. Because I think we'll all be a bit bored by then. It's like, yeah, seen that, seen that, ready to move on now. Right, and while I've got this cut out, I'm just going to see. I'm going to put, as I go, I'm going to put the smaller second page of each aside since we're not using those right now. Um, oh, that one's just a fraction too wide. That one, that one works. Cut it out of the middle. might need a fourth one in this column but we'll get this these cut out or this one cut out and then we'll see whether we need a fourth one so we didn't end up going for a bike ride last night hubby had had a big day at work and then when he got home he mowed the front and side lawns so he was he was really tired and we decided, well, he decided, and I was I was fine with it, uh, that we'd have a break from biking. So that's only three days we've missed since New Year's Eve when we started going for bike rides together. So I have to say, that's pretty good going, really, isn't it? Pretty good going. That one there, and... No, I'm actually going to go with three, and I'm going to do these ones slightly differently. Let's ink them up. 
I've also ordered myself a, did it this morning, ordered a re-anchor for my vintage photo. So I've finally just gone ahead and done it. And I ordered a couple of mini distress inks as well. And I ordered old paper, I think it's called. And I ordered Vict Victorian Velvet. And then I had a phone call from the company just like half an hour ago or a little bit longer maybe. Um, and they're out of stock because they've got the website and then they've got a physical store. So while I ordered it online, they must have actually sold it in store. And so I had to change my colour. They said I could wait four to six weeks for it to come in. And I was like, no, I'm not going to wait. That, like, that seems like forever away. It's not, of course. It will go quite quickly. And I was like, I need to choose another colour. But what colour do I go for? Because... You know, if you're a Tim Holtz fan, you'll know how many colours there are available. And so I was just like, oh, what are the names and what do I want? What do I want to substitute it with? And um, so I had been considering getting a darker brown. I had talked about walnut stain, but I was also looking at, um, what's it called? The espresso, ground espresso. And... So just because I needed to give her an answer um, on what I was going to do, I just said Grand Espresso. So instead of Victorian Velvet, I'm getting Grand Espresso. So I am getting the darker brown. And I wasn't sure whether I wanted Walnut Stain or Espresso. So I just made a off-the-cuff decision. Because I know it's not as orangey. Although I've never used it, I know it's not as orangey as the vintage photo. So, I don't know if I'm getting these straight. That's okay. Right. Do I want to go with something a bit narrower? Or do I want to, like, utilise this and go perhaps wider? Maybe I need to go wider. Um, you could go for something like this. Let's go that, just um, just so I'm not keeping you all day, because otherwise if I went narrow, I could do two more columns. And I think they would be super cute, but let's, for the purposes of this video, just go with the slightly bigger ones. See, I'm so good to you guys. Well, I try. I try. So let's see what, that one's slightly wider, but I think I'm going to go with it. I think it's interesting with these numbers on it. Let's pop that one up there. Yeah, so it's been an interesting week really. And I'm so looking forward to going to pick up the car. And I'm in my head, I've been wondering when I'm actually going to drive it. I don't want to really drive it around the city for the first time. I want to drive it on like an open road where I can kind of get a feel for it without fear I might hit something or use the brakes too hard. You know, when you're not used to the brakes and if they're a bit more responsive than what I'm used to. Um, all those sorts of things. So I've been thinking, what point am I going to say it's my turn to drive the new car? Probably on the way home, I suspect. Probably organise a point to pull over and swap cars, because we'll have the two cars to bring home. Um, yeah, so exciting, exciting days. No. Just trying to find that last one. Don't think I want those ones, the circle ones. Let's try this page. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just kind of looking for close. And it can be narrower. I just trim a bit more off potentially. So that one's quite deep. 
So yeah, no, I think I still want one that's relatively deep. Let's try this one. I don't know whether this is interesting for you guys or not. Let's go with this one. I don't know if it's as deep as what I was after, but it's all right. I can just go with it. Right. Last one to cut out. I wanted to do something different for this master using master board, so we will do kind of a more normal approach probably next time, but no guarantees. It depends what way my brain's headed and what inspires me. Right. I'm just going to put the lid on my glue while we ink up and get rid of this. Oops, sorry about the cling. Get rid of the scraps out of my way. Look, my lid of my vintage photo is so inky that you can barely see the text under the, all the layers of ink because I would always when I was using a sponge always set the sponge on the lid and so just all the ink would color it up now the brush kind of sits on the side it doesn't sit flat like down on like that on the lid so it's quite interesting now I noticed how dark the lid was and if it gets now, uh, like it sits on my desk right beside where my glass drinking glass sits and if hubby pours a fizzy drink into it and the bubbles come out then it pulls in little droplets on top and then pulls up that ink and so if I accidentally touch it I get ink all over everything so I've got to keep an eye on that the first time it happened I was like where on earth is the sink coming from and then when I saw the marks on top of the Pad, it was like well that's where it's coming from but like what's causing that to happen and then it took me a few more days to realize it was the pouring of the fizzy drink beside it it was lifting the ink up because it's a water reactive ink so no surprises really right so to fill this gap we are going to give a bigger border I think these are going to be super cute but you can be the judge of that once we're done. Um, I need to put it over this way a bit more. Bearing in mind we need to leave the, the border around this one as well. So I'm going to line up down this edge. Um, place them roughly where I want them I think. Yep, that was actually a good choice, that one. That's a good size for the gap that I've got. Love my tacky glue, glue bottle. This little bottle just from cheap shop. Costs around $3.50 for two of them, and it's just awesome. Actually, the first two I bought were... $4.50 for two and I was quite happy with that price and then I found them at a different shop and they were $3.50 for two and I was like yay even better and they're exact same bottle like same brand same size same everything just a dollar difference so even in the cheap shops it pays to shop around it really does Right, there we go. We've got them all down. Doesn't that look fun? Like, in, in reality, you could, like, turn that into a interesting journal page, depending on the thickness, of course. Right, okay, back to the guillotine. I'm now going to chop this up. Now, quite often, I would chop from the back and be surprised by what we get when we turn it over. We'll, we'll definitely do that in a different video. Uh, but for this one, I want to chop 
in between. So I might start, actually turn it around, start with this so I can kind of get the gaps hopefully about right. It's quite, quite a few layers there it's chopping through and then doesn't worry me if it's not exactly close enough is good enough and then we've got a little bit extra here so how much is that I just want to gauge on my cutter exactly or roughly where I need to trim to to get about right so I need to think about there so I am cutting off a strip and that could actually be an interesting like bit of washi, faux washi or something. Thick, but we can use it. Right, let's chop these up. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing to get a rough kind of idea of even border, kind of. How many times can I say that? Few more times right and I think just a little bit off the bottom here again just a little little piece little piece good actually good in a cluster those little bits would be just fine right these ones were a little bit different I deliberately left more underneath them so I'm going to do this about the same and then leave a bit more under it and we're going to do something slightly different with those there we go that's those and then these ones were the first row and they were these the first row yes they were the first row um actually it looks like i left too much in between that's all right we'll just we'll trim up if we need to Right, I'm just going to take a little bit off the bottom of that one, I think. That one's boring. Not a lot going on. I'm just going to bin that bit. Okay, so we've got cute little pieces where the label becomes our focal point. So from here, I like rounded corners. Think of these like mini business cards or something of the sort. So I'm just going to whip around. Do I want to trim that one? Um, no, I'm just going to leave it as is. It really doesn't matter too much. It's going to be cute. And they're going to be mini journal cards. Or you could turn them, depending how big you've made them, what you've used as your focal image, you could turn them into dangles or um, pieces for the front of a journal, like a journal topper. You could turn them into tags if you've done them in a different shape, like lots of options. That's the thing I need to empty out my bits underneath now I do have other corner rounders but when I'm doing multiples like this I just find it having this sitting on the desk is easier and quicker and I'm not sort of juggling things in my hands like a handheld one oops I didn't quite get that one So hopefully you can see what they're going to turn out like. We haven't quite finished. Of course I do want to ink around them. Very important in my world. Entirely optional for you. And you could choose an ink that matches the colour that you put on. Or a contrasting colour. I'm just using that vintage option of the vintage photo. Because it's my go-to. Right, get rid of these little 
faces. Oops, half of them ended up in my lap somehow. Right, sip of my tea, it's almost finished. Okay, let's grab a couple out. I'm not going to do all of them because I don't think we need to. Let's take this one. Um, and then maybe this one because it's got the extra bit on the bottom. Maybe we'll do three. And this one. Just because. So, let's pink around. And if there's any areas that you think are a bit plain, you can add a bit more ink to those areas just to give it a bit of detail or a bit of something now if you are inking don't forget the back I'll do the back on this one but I will spare you the others because it's just a repetitive process of doing around all of them so I won't won't bore you with that Super cute. I love them. I think this is so much fun. And then I do want to do one other thing to them to finish them off. See this one with the bigger bit at the bottom we could add a word or some other image like a little little something. A little word or a little um, like flower or butterfly or something just depending on the look you're going for and what will match the label or that doesn't have to match like don't get me wrong it doesn't have to match it can be something entirely random like a butterfly on that not a problem but you also might want to theme it a bit more like that's hooks and eyes I've got some sewing related stamps um, so I could stamp a, an image of a cotton reel or a needle or a pin or something and add it in the bottom there. Right, so inked up the th front of the three of those. Oops, upside down with Kia. Okay, now to finish it off, I want to do some stamping. So I have some splatters. Sorry about the squeaky chair, guys. Um, splatters or... Well, we could go something like that, like a hessian. Um, or then my coffee rings is the other one I was thinking of. Um, let's grab out a drop of paper. Oops, it's getting a bit beat up go right and I'm gonna use probably coffee yep coffee uh, archival ranger archive Ugh. I can't speak ranger archival ink let's grab a block out and maybe we'll do some maybe we'll do each one differently just to see the different effect of using different things this one I don't need the block for I often just leave it on the, the acetate and just dip, dip it into the ink and hold it so you get kind of a random print. Oops, move that bit of plastic out of the way. So I'm not going super heavy. Just adding a little something. I want to give that a quick clean off. I try to be a good stamp mum. Doesn't always happen, but I do mostly clean them off. Right, so that one, it's very subtle. Like, very subtle. This is not going to be quite so subtle, the coffee rings. So, which one would we like? I do like the really big splatter one, but perhaps we'll go, because it's a small card, we'll go with one of the smaller rings. Maybe we'll go with this one. So this one I will use a block. If 
fun. Okay, that's that one. Just want to give you a variety of options in that whatever you've got, you don't need all these things, but if you've got one of them or something similar, that's that will do. So in this set we have dots or splatters. Um, just wondering which I want. Maybe a splatter. Let's let's go on full on splatter. Splat splat. Okay. This one in the middle, and we've got this bit down the bottom, which we could put something on, but I'm going to just use that to put my splatter on. Fun. Let's put a little bit up the top there, and then just. Be coming in from the corner there. Just add a little something to that bearer patch. Okay, gee, it's getting warm. I had goosebumps before, and hubby messaged me and says, "Don't forget to grab the fan out if you need the fan," because he's got his on at work. And I was like, "Oh, actually, I've got goosebumps. I'm not hot, but the sun's come around over the house, and it's starting to warm up." So it's supposed to be 30 degrees today and I imagine outside it probably is but I've got all the curtains closed to keep it cool and obviously it was a little bit too cool earlier right get rid of that so it's not distracting so let me lift these up so you can have a good look hopefully you can see see our little coffee rings here mini coffee rings and that's the one that we have inked around the back cute just cute little pieces you could punch a hole and make it into a little dangle you could make them into altered paper clips in which case you wouldn't need to worry about backing them if they're not going to be written on but this is my idea just mini little this one's obviously a bit bigger sort of closer to a, a normal size journal card but aren't they super cute i want to make smaller ones I really want to make smaller ones. And then these ones that we haven't inked around. Um, maybe I'll do one at a time so you can actually see them nicely. Hopefully you can see them okay in camera. Aren't the labels just so cool? They are just visually so appealing. And that one. And then that one. So it's super fun using these wonderful labels that are new from the Junk Journal Studio. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to finish off inking around these and they'll be all ready to go into whatever journal I find that they work in. Thanks so much for joining me today guys. I hope this was useful. Um, as I said I will do a making video after each challenge so the week following. I'll do a making video so that we have some ideas on how to use our beautiful master boards. Thanks so much for being here. Take care. Have a fabulous weekend. And I'll see you on possibly Sunday or Saturday. I don't know. Anyway, deal it up challenge on Monday at, at the very least. Okay, guys. Bye for now.